connection. And you might ask, well, Edwin, does it really work? So when I was appointed as a labor board lead consultant at St. George's Hospital in London in 2005, I was there from 2005 to 2020. I was appointed on the back of an HIE review, hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy review, because there were concerns that St. George's HIE rate was very high at that time. So when we introduced physiological interpretation of CTG, you can see uh, I left in February, 2020. So until that time, our uh, intrapartum uh, emergency cesarean section was 6% to 8%. And the total cesarean section, despite of us running a regional service, referral service of placenta accreta was 22 to 27%. And you can see once we trained all the staff on physiology interpretation of CTG, our metabolic acidosis rate at term fell quite significantly. When I joined, it was the publication said it was 2.8%. And now it is, it was, when I left, it was 0.6%. So you might say it must be to do with something to do with tooting water because the moment the obstetricians at St. George's Hospital learned about physiology, they stopped cutting the baby's skin for fetal blood sampling. They reduced the amount of intrapartum cesarean section by 30% and reduce the amount of hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy by 50%. But everywhere doctors are clever, midwives are clever. These are the hospitals in the UK and abroad, abroad where I have done CTG masterclasses based on physiology. You can see there's a consistent, uh, the first thing the doctors do is to stop cutting the baby's skin because they know that they, that is useless. They understand physiology. Once you understand physiology, you don't have to waste time and cover the ignorance by cutting someone else's skin to find out whether the brain is acidotic. But you can see there's a consistent reduction in fetal uh, hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy and cesarean section. And our team uh, got a national award in 2016 for low total cesarean section low intrapartum cesarean section. And this is what I'm very proud of, half the national average of cerebral palsy, HIE. And you might say we need long-term uh, data. This is a hospital in Carmarthen in Wales. You can see their HI rate was about 13 cases. And this is not only the physiological training through masterclasses, what you need is a local leadership. You need to have a midwife and a doctor. So in, in Carmarthen, you have Shankar, and a group of midwives and doctors who are focused on improving care. They are focused on individualization of care because they recognize that the nice sticker doesn't work. And when you do that, uh, it's zero. So you, you can't stop all HIEs. You will have uh, HIEs due to uh, antenatal problems and antenatal damage. All we can do is to avoid or make hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy due to intrapartum hypoxic insult to zero. We should aim to make HIE due to CTG misinterpretation to zero. That's what we can do. And they have done it really well for the last four years. And you might say, does it come at an increased cost of an emergency section going up? Well, because pathological CTGs, the false positive rate is over 90% you not only make it better for babies by reducing HIE, you also make it better for mums. You might say we want long-term evidence. So we looked at our 11 year data, 52,000 births and our HIE rate was 0 0.3 per thousand, which is one fifth the national average of um, uh, in the UK. And our intrapartum fetal monitoring team again got another national award in 2017 for excellent perinatal outcomes. And this hospital in Greenwich, you can see once everyone is trained, again, there's Marike and the team who are focused on reducing brain damage and meconium aspiration syndrome. And there was a significant reduction in both HIE and meconium aspiration syndrome rate once they understood physiology and applied to uh, daily life. This is South Warwickshire. Again, you need local leadership. Suganya and the team there, she's a labor ward lead and she is pushing physiological interpretation of CTG. You can see the total intrapartum cesarean section rate to fetal compromise uh, went from 30% of all cesarean section to about 5%. 
And this is why I do the master classes and training or physiology. And you can see once you make doctors and midwives in the UK who are very clever people, once they understand the physiological responses, you can really make a difference to cerebral palsy. So you can see by using a sticker with 50%, 30%, 90% uh, contractions, which are based on personal opinion and missing the baby. Once you put the baby in the center, at the center and say, how is the fetus? And you understand, and I understand the fetal response to stress, we can significantly reduce the HI rate. And this is Lewisham. They got an award from the Each Baby Counts uh, and that is because 33% reduction uh, in, uh, in annual admissions. And this is Susanna Pereira is leading the change in Kingston. And they got a national award because there was a 60% reduction in HI rate. And this is another hospital in Wales after they introduced physiological interpretation of CTG. You can see the total emergency section rate for fetal compromise went from 35% to 17%. And, and also the rate of HI also reduced and they stopped cutting the skin altogether because once you understand fetal physiology, no obstetrician would want to cut a poor baby's skin to find out whether the baby's brain is acidotic. And this is a list of hospitals. Once they, uh, they had about 12 to 13 cases of HIE every year. Uh, and then once they made a switch to stop using NICE guidelines and went to physiological interpretation of CTG in January 2020, you can see within months you see the change. And, and that is all because the, there is just their labor ward leech is driving the change with a group of midwives and doctors. So all you need is a local team of obstetricians and midwives who really feel that they should reduce hypoxic injuries by using the right tool. What about outside the UK? This is Limerick in Ireland. They used to have eight to 12 week cases of HIE every year. And after the introduction of physiology is only two uh, cases and they, uh, they have one of the best perinatal outcomes in Ireland, Republic of Ireland at the moment. And this is Oman, you can see the emergency cesarean section rate is halved and there's a 60% reduction in HIE. What about 2021, after Brexit, after the Irish border, after changes in the transport, uh, you know, does it change? Does human physiology change after Brexit? And this is where I'm working at the moment, uh, Basildon University Hospital, unfortunately, the CQC visited there because there were six babies being brain cooled for severe hypoxic injury in two months in April, March, April, 2020. But I told the midwives and doctors in Basildon that it, they are very good people. It's not their problem. The problem was this tool that they were using. They were using the NICE guideline sticker. And if you think about this, none of these numbers are based on any scientific evidence. And this number, would be causing unnecessary harm to babies with uh, poor reserves like growth restriction or chorioamorinitis. And once they discontinued NICE guidelines and introduced physiological CTG guidelines, uh, which was, as I said, um, developed by 34 CTG experts from 14 countries and use these tools to identify babies who come with pre-existing injury and ask this question, how is this fetus all the time, putting the baby at the center of fetal monitoring. I think in the UK, we have forgotten that. We have put a sticker at the center of the baby with fetal monitoring. We need to put the baby back. Fetal monitoring is about the fetus. It's about the baby's responses. It's about baby's individual reserves. So when we ask the question to midwives and doctors now, how do you feel the new change? Do you, and eight, over 80% said they feel that the new physiological guidelines were very easy to use. 95.8% of uh, midwives and doctors said it helps in individualization of care. But this is what is most important about outcomes. You could see in the whole of 2020, there were 11 babies who went out for cooling, but after the staff were trained on fetal physiology for the last 10 months, touch wood, uh, not a single baby who had cooling due to intrapart of hypoxic injury or CTG misinterpretation. And again, when we started 
training staff on features of neuroinflammation, which NICE guidelines do not talk about it. They can see there's a significant change in the number of babies with meconium aspiration syndrome. If you get chorioaminitis management right, then by understanding and acting on chorioaminitis based on the CTG features not mentioned in NICE guidelines, then you can see you can see a significant uh, reduction in the number of cases of meconium aspiration syndrome. And we had one case which is due to which was due to postnatal aspiration in a baby who was born with very good condition at birth, which we couldn't prevent it, which is very sad. But our aim is always zero. We want to have zero HIE, zero meconium aspiration in the labor wards where we work. And this is Basildon Sister Hospital, Broomfield, part of MSE, Mid and South Essex. Um, um, NHS Foundation Trust with almost 12,500 births between three hospitals. You could see here, this is the HI rate and this is the babies who were brain cooled in 2017. And once physiological interpretation CTG masterclass was carried out. And it's not only that, we need local champions. We have Kat Reeves who is a fetal surveillance midwives, uh, midwife there who doesn't teach staff on nice guidelines sticker. No, she, she trains local staff on physiological responses of the human fetus on the different types of hypoxia and about chorioaminitis. And you can see what a big difference such an MDT engagement and local leadership can make when physiology is implemented in daily life. So, uh, you can see whenever, whenever CTG masterclasses are conducted, when you give one CTG trace to the delegates who use NICE guidelines in their daily practice, you invariably to get three answers. And 56% they say suspicious because they really don't know what's happening. And that's why obstetricians and midwives have that classification suspicious. We really don't know, it's suspicious. But once you train them, 93% of the delegates were able to identify what the problem based on the knowledge of physiology. And that's what physiology does. And 33% had pathological CTG means they would have done some intervention. You can see the change once you change your, the mindset with physiology. This is Southgate Hospital. Again, three answers at the beginning when they use nice guidelines. And then some hospitals are excellent they completely change. And this is Scotland again for the second time in a different group. You can see three answers and 45%, they don't know what they are doing because it's not their fault, it's the sticker's fault, suspicious. But once they are trained, over 95% give you one answer, which is a correct answer. So this guideline, the problem is none of these numbers are uh, based on scientific evidence. They are all felt by five obstetricians with the larger uh, guideline group. But there were only five obstetricians who were, had expertise uh, in CTG. And, but none of those numbers are based on any scientific evidence. And we also increased the number of the heart rate to 180. So let me finish by asking a question to us. For those of us who still continue to use nice, non-evidence-based, personal opinion-based CTG guidelines, as I have said, I use several nice guidelines in my clinical practice because the vast majority of nice guidelines are not based on personal opinion. They are based on scientific evidence. They are based on grade A evidence and their evidence statements reflect that. But unfortunately, as far as the CTG NICE guideline are concerned, and it has been clearly stated by the guideline group that they are all felt, they are no, there's no evidence. So our question is, would we accept if this same tool is used in not any other woman and the baby in the community, but on our sisters, on our partners, on our ourselves, if I, I, I go through that, or close friends? That's the question we need to answer because this is sad and unacceptable that we are using a tool 
and the hospitals are getting into trouble and the, the midwives and doctors in those hospitals, they are very good clinicians, they are very good people. But if you give them a bad tool and that's what makes them have, uh, mis make them make mistakes and sadly patients, both babies and families are, and women are pay, we get, paying for the, our mistakes. And it's not only the mistakes in terms of clinical outcomes and the human costs, it is also financial costs that the NHS has to pay when we use a tool which is not fit for purpose. So th these are not numbers, they are humans. Babies are human and they are the ones who are going to end up in the wheelchair if, if we are not doing the right thing. And we cannot be had publishing reports year after year saying that we have a problem and 72% of those babies, different care would have resulted in different outcomes if we are not willing to change the tool. The tool is the problem, it's not the midwives who are a problem, it's not the obstetricians who are a problem. And I'm very happy because when I started this journey, St. George's was the only hospital uh, 10 years ago who did not follow NICE guidelines. And I was looked at as a crazy Sri Lankan trying to do, looking different and trying to do something different. But now those red blobs are the NICE guideline units. And you can see in the UK how the journey has started. And the, the, the black ones, we haven't got any responses so far. And this is the available evidence or, or, or the information so far. But you can see that on the ground, midwives and doctors are waking up. They see the problem and they are changing. And those who are worried about legal uh, medical legal stuff and some some senior obstetricians and midwives will scare you saying that medical legally where do we stand well medical legally we use bolum test and bolum test is what you do should be supported by a responsible group of midwives and doctors doing the same thing and now you can see nice guidelines is no longer the standard of care because you can see the variation in the uk there's going to be responsible body of obstetricians practicing physiological interpretation of CTG, and that is your Bolum test. In fact, in the guideline, there are 34 experts from 14 countries, including several from the UK. And therefore, medical legally, please don't worry that shifting from NICE to physiology will cause you any medical legal pitfalls because medical legally you're judged based on what you do, is it supposed, supported by a responsible body of medical uh, obstetricians and midwives practicing in your field? And this, this particular information shows you that lots of move, units have moved from NICE guidelines. And in fact, if you look at the NICE guideline itself in 2017, they have made this very important um, statement in their front page. They have said it's your responsibility and it is not mandatory to apply the recommendations. So NICE itself is saying, because I think even NICE guideline group knows the amount of harm that is being caused by that guideline tool. And probably to protect themselves, they have said this, but this is your tool for your medical legal protection. It is not mandatory to apply these recommendations. So please don't worry about having medical legal issues. And it's very sad that the hospitals are, have been asked to pay the money back. And that's not the staff's problem. It is a tool problem. And that's why we need to change. So where do we go from here? We have two options. One is easy. Keep doing the same. So continue use nice guidelines, using nice guidelines. Yes, babies are going to uh, get damaged. They are going to die. And we know why. And that's because the tool is wrong and the tool is not evidence-based. But this is an easy option. And I'm sure humans, uh, you know, some of us would want to do that because it's easy. But then the difficult option is take a step back and ask ourselves, is this right for women to have unnecessary cesarean sections? because of pathological CTGs, 
without determining fetal response to stress. Is it right for babies to end up on wheelchairs because we cannot question a tool which is not scientific? And if you look at how, what we have been counting in 2017, before the NICE guideline was revised, 951 babies were either brain damaged or they died due to intrapartum related hypoxia. And again, you can see about 651 babies had, 65 babies had severe brain damage. We introduced this tool in the UK by some hospitals in 2017 and each baby counts. This is, this is objective, this is from each baby counts. And you can see how much the number, total number of deaths and um, severe brain injury has gone. And you can see how many babies, extra babies have had severe brain injury uh, once the tool was introduced. And the question is, is it fair on women, babies, our staff, because some of our staff get upset, they leave the profession. And the UK taxpayer is funding the five million pounds we are paying every day to a lawyer because of our mistakes. 1.9 billion or 1,900 million pounds a year. And is it ethical? So let's take a step back. Normal suspicious pathological, if you look at each baby counts report, the last five of them, over 70% 70, 70 are due to substandard care. In, a, in other words, a different care may have given rise to different outcome. So as humans, whether you're a baby, a fetus, or an adult, we are exposed to stress. And most of us compensate to the stress. And then we go into decompensation. And once we start decompensating, we go into neurological damage, multi-organ failure or death. So the idea is in labor to you know, intervene at the right time. If we intervene based on pathological CTGs and decelerations, the poor woman is going to have unnecessary cesarean sections and they might die of accreta in creta per creta next time. If you intervene too late, having arbitrarily cutoffs of 30%, 50%, 90 minutes, 30 minutes, you, we will end up having neurological injury. Or if you artificially change the baseline heart rate from 160 to 180, those babies with chorioamorinitis or uh, go through growth restriction who cannot go beyond 180 will be missed and they may, have, they may die or have severe damage. So the conclusion is it's the responsibility of each and every obstetrician, you and I, to practice evidence-based medicine. I never tell anyone to stop using NICE guidelines. That's not my role. My role is to give information for a good midwife and a good doctor to think, to think and decide what is the best thing to do for our patients. Because our, at the end of the day, it is our responsibility to do first do no harm. And it's up to each and every one of us to determine whether what we are using currently is it fit for purpose. And ask ourselves how many more reports we need before we change. And I want to finish with something positive. And this is latest uh, from Peterborough. You can see they had 10 to 12 cases of HIE. And after the masterclass for the last 18 months, it's zero. And the amount of babies who unfortunately had a scalp cut, about 15% of 5,000 births, at a, is now zero. And that tells you that knowledge improves practice and practice improves outcomes. So let's work together and try to make HIE due to CTG misinterpretation and intrapartum hypoxic insults to zero Let's not accept any other number than zero for that. At the same time, let's stop historical nonsensical practices like fetal blood sampling, thinking that taking a sample from the skin reflects the brain because the scalp is close to the brain. That was 1962. Because when we do crazy procedures like that, it doubles the risk of cesarean section in women because we are cutting a non-essential tissue which is acidotic in labor. And they might end up with accreta in creta per creta next time or uterine eruption. So I'd like to thank you very much for listening to this short presentation. 
the aim is to help maternity units who are now trying to move away from pattern-based NICE guidelines to physiological interpretation of CTG by asking the question, how is this fetus? So I think it is our responsibility to convince the trust boards and the senior management by highlighting to them that the current tool, whereas NICE has produced lots of excellent guidelines which you should be make, using in the daily practice if they are evidence-based, this particular tool, CTG guideline produced by NICE, as stated in the guideline itself, is not based on evidence. And if we have to improve outcomes, then we need to do something different because we cannot allow babies and women to be damaged by these guidelines. Thank you very much.